He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues. So just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity. These things aren't political. They're biblical. God's word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Hey everybody, welcome to Our Watch. I'm Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. We have a, a little bit of a different program for you today. Normally we're going verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and we just we share with you what we, we learned and, and taught on a Sunday. Today, uh, as we are moving into our new building, we had a time where we discussed where we came from and where we're headed, and we wanted to share that with you and really hope that that's a blessing. So take a listen to this. We had some humble beginnings, for sure. When we first started, I mean, our first service was in a park, and it wasn't really like we weren't a church congregation yet. You know, it was just kind of we met in a park, but um, it became very clear very quick that, that God was doing something. And and at the end of our park service, somebody yelled out, hey, where are we meeting next week? And we didn't have anywhere to meet next week. And we found a pizza place in Marietta known as Max Pizza. At the time, it was called Bob's Pizza. It's right over there off Calamia. Now it's Max Pizza. Um, we met there. That was our first service. Um, I had no pulpit, so they had a trash can. You know those trash cans where you put a tray on it? Like you can dump your tray and then put the tray on top. I took that, turned it around, put my Bible where the tray would be, and trash can was my pulpit that day. And... Um, the children's ministry, we had no, the only separate area for a children's ministry was the bar. So we had all of our kids in a bar. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, there's a picture somewhere, I uh, wish we could have found it for today to show yeah. everybody, but you've got kids and coloring with their lessons, and you've got beer signs behind them, yeah, Sierra like, Nevada. Like and neon Bud light, and, yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's what God provided for us. So, right. you know, wasn't about the place and what took place there other than what we were there to do and what God provided for us. Yeah. It's like when he says that, you know, what Satan means for evil, God will use for good. There you go. Yeah. You know, doing ministry in a bar. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, we, we just did what we could do and, and that's what God provided. So we, we did it. And, and it was just as the Israelites setting out, knowing that God's going to guide and God's going to provide. And, you know, the, there was a sense, I'm sure, of excitement for those people. There was a sense of excitement for us as well. Yeah. Yeah, it was great just to be getting together and regardless of where we were, uh, able to worship and hear the Word of God and have fellowship together and made it real easy on knowing where to go to lunch afterwards. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was, it, was, there, it was exciting, you know, but it was exciting. It was kind of scary at the same time, like, you know, is God going to provide? Is God going to take care of us? Is you know, and, and Satan has a great way of creeping into people's minds, and and you know, we we learn as believers, we learn to discern the voice of God, and you know, you move forward on God's instructions, and and sometimes when you know you have these humble beginnings, and and God's just providing what you need when you need it. There isn't like this surplus. It's just like, okay, we hope God gives us what we need. Sometimes the need doesn't come in until the very last second. So you're going, gosh, did I hear from God? Is this, are we doing something right or are we wrong in what we're doing? It could be, you know, it could be challenging where, where Satan tries to trip you up and go, you didn't really hear from God. You're not doing what God wants you to do. And, and I, I can confess to you, I had many moments like that. Like, did I mess this up? You know, am I, am I doing something wrong here? And that, it, it can be scary for sure. But we, uh, we only spent, we, we couldn't remember, but like three or four weeks, right, at Max? Yeah, it wasn't it, long at all. Yeah, it wasn't that long. But we, we spent a few weeks there. God opened the door for us to move into Vista Marietta High School. And we found ourselves at Vista Maria High School. This is a, a picture of one of our Christmas services there um, in, their, in their performing arts theater. And you can imagine doing ministry at a school, you have to set up on a Sunday morning, and then at the end of service, you have to tear down. And everything has to be moved in, moved out. And that is a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, especially when it's so early in the morning. You know, those that were part of that setup crew would bring a trailer in, crack it on, 
kind of like we do here now. And uh, we're just so thankful for everybody that's been willing to be a part of that over the years and until currently. But um, even, even more so than here, because we couldn't leave anything at the school. It was a trailer full of every supply and piece of equipment that we needed to have Sunday service. And then it was all packed up again at the end of the day. And so needless to say, those were some pretty long days, even though there were only two services at that time. There were some pretty long days. Right. It was a lot of setup and a lot of teardown for only two services, um, especially because this one right here wanted to cook breakfast for everybody, <laughs> and she did. Every We had pancakes and waffles and eggs and bacon and cereal and... Um, what happened? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I happened. I had to be obedient to tell I had to tell her, we said, have to no stop. More. We can't afford it. Yeah. We were feeding so many people. I said, we don't have the money to keep doing this. And I told her when she first started, I go, when you start doing something, it's hard to take it away. Yeah. And she's like, I want to do it anyway. So like, oh my gosh, we were feeding so many people every Sunday. And uh, yeah, it, it was hard. I mean, but it was a lot was of work. Great. It was great. Yeah. It was great. I mean, it was this awesome. ministry has always found a way to revolve around food in one way or another. Yeah. And then that was, you know, Ruby and a couple other ladies washing all the dishes of everything that was used <laughs> in the breakfast in the morning and just such a process and um, came with its challenges, you know, being yeah. in that location. But at the same time, you know, there was plenty of parking and we had a pool to use. We'd have family events during the summer. I mean, we found a way to make use of what we had then right. and anywhere else that we've been. Yeah, and God was providing, even though we were complaining. I'll admit that. You know, we were just like the Israelites. Yeah, we want meat. I was like, man, Lord, we want a building. It, it was, it was so much work. And as you know, here in Temecula Valley, you you got two seasons. You got hot, and then you've got cold or hotter. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's it's hard to find a happy medium here. You know, you're you're if you're outside and you're setting up everything. It's hot, and it's hard work, and then you get into the wintertime, and it's like 40 degrees outside. Everybody's out there freezing, trying to unload everything and pack it back up, you know? So it's, it, we, I found myself complaining, and I heard other people complaining, and we did that for four years, setting up and tearing down and setting up and tearing down, and, and um, I had to learn to, to just be grateful for what God was giving us, and, and he did, and we did. You know, we, we found the ways, you know, like, Pastor Simon was saying the pool days and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun, um, but I, you know, I had to learn to to pray and I had to learn to to seek the Lord um, for where we would go. And one of the things I I started doing is I started praying, Lord, I, I want a building. We were looking all over for a building we could rent. I said, Lord, I want. I want a building for 76 cents a foot. The, as I'm praying to God, he's like putting that number on my heart, 76 cents. Why not 75 cents, right? I know, 76 I know cents, I'm weird. weird like that, but um, it was the he's number not. God had given me. And and um, and I went to the board and I said, hey, I'm, I'm praying that God would find us a building for 76 cents. And of course the board was like, 70, why 76? I don't know. It's just the number God has given me. And, and um yeah, you know, we had visited many, many properties, and and uh, I was overseas. I got a call from the realtor that was helping us, and he said, hey, "I got a property I want to show you." And I asked him where it was. And for those of you that that were with us over at McAlby Court, that's this is the property I'm talking about. Um, I said, "I said, where is it?" And he told me where it was, and I'm like, "No, forget it. <laughs> I don't want. I did not like that location at all." He goes, "Well, I really think you should come and take a look." So I I did. I went and took a look, and. I said, well, how, I said, I really don't, I don't want to be here, how, but how much is it? And he starts flipping through his paperwork. He goes, they have some weird number. And he gets, he's like, oh, it's 76 cents a foot. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Lord, I mean, how can, how can you deny that? You know? So we did, we got this, uh, we got this building and, and we moved in. We had, that was our first day there and we were doing some praise and worship and, and, um, I'm pretty sure that was our entire congregation at the time. We were, uh, you know, much, much smaller than we, we are today. Um, but we were there, and um, it was it was not what I wanted. I'll be I'll admit it was not what I wanted. In fact, the blue carpet that that you can see there, you can't see the flaws in it from this picture. But we lovingly refer to the carpet as Frankenstein because it just had rips and tears all over it. Um, both of, both of you would vacuum duct tape um, because we would vacuum, mm -hmm. yeah. and the carpet would literally shred all the way up you know take one one little piece and there went 
another one, and there went another one, so more duct tape. Yeah, we'd have to duct tape to make sure the vacuum wouldn't catch these little pieces because it would just suck it right up. Um, so we had yeah. tape, duct tape everywhere. and uh, the it was, beginning. Yeah, it was... It was um, but it was a place where we, we set up and we didn't have to tear down, set up, tear down, set up, tear down. So it was, a, it was, you know, it was God leading us in the direction he wanted us. And another reason I didn't like it, it was right next door to Marietta School District. And they don't like me. So, <laughs> uh-huh. so looking at this picture, I'm looking at it again. We didn't have a stage. And look at on the wall right there. Yeah, there's there's no, no pulpit. There's no sound booth. There's no chairs. Yeah. So we've definitely done better. <laughs> Well, what you know, what happened was we we got in there and then we 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 things were tight, weren't they, Ruby? Yeah, yeah but there were times where you didn't even want to tell me what the tithe was that week. No, no, it was pretty hard times, but um, yeah. through those hard times, it was also a blessing to see how God came through through it all. Like mm-hmm. He met our needs. Right. Maybe yeah. we didn't have all the things we wanted. But he did give us everything we needed. Right. Yeah. Every so time. That was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. We never went without. God yes. God made sure that we had the doors open and the air conditioning on and the lights on and donuts. And donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and it was, some of you guys have been through those times with us. As I scan the room, I see some faces that stuck it through. So thank you for um, sticking by and, and sticking strong. Like Tim read the scripture from Joshua where it says to be strong and courageous. Um, Tim is not the most liked in the valley, as many of you know, but you've stuck it through and had his back. So thank you so much for those that um, saw something in Tim years ago. And um, you are faithful to see the fruit of sticking strong. We don't know, Tim and I don't know what money comes in. We have no idea what you guys give. Like I shared, first service, one of you might give a million dollars. We have no clue because we don't want, for accountability is what it's for. Well, I would know if somebody gave a million. Right. I was going to say, we would know that. I wouldn't know who they are, but I would know what happened. Right. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But um, we don't know, you know, monetary-wise, we have no idea. And um, just to see how God's provided, like Ruby shared, through the years and just being faithful in the ministry that we know God's called um, Tim. And then having Pastor Simon and Ruby um, pretty much take on the brunt of the ministry. And um, for all of you that like to complain, (laughs) Pastor Simon (laughs) gets to hear you. (laughs) (laughs) And he's still here. He hasn't lost his hair yet. So this is good. Just turn See what you get to look forward to. (laughs) So thank you, all of you who have stuck strong and and will continue to. So thank you. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. We, uh, we worked hard, though. It was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of praying. It was a lot of trusting in the Lord. And we, we scrimped and saved, and we ended up doing a remodel. Um, and and we, if we could, let's just flip back and forth for a second. Like that's, That was what we moved into, and then that is what it ended up looking like. And that would, there's, I know for the four of us and several of you that are here, um, quite literally, we have sweat and blood and even some tears physically in that building right there. Um, we literally put blood, sweat, and tears into it. It was a lot of hard work. We didn't have money to hire a contractor. So, you know, we, we did that, you know, we did that yeah. with the Lord's help. Yeah. And it was a blessing to actually see it that, you know, going through those nights that I, one time, I think I came in the next day and Nikki never went home. <laughs> she, she she was still there with me and painting. So yeah. it was, it was a blessing. It was a blessing and it was a lot of hard work and, you know, it couldn't have come at a better time because it was right around that, that the f- completion of that, that an order came from our government to shut down the church. And that was kind of another movement in the direction you see God's heading us even today. That I believe that was this very pivotal point for the ministry where, where we just said, no, we're not going to do that. And I ended up, um, as a leader, just like Moses ended up struggling and having people not agree with some of the things Moses would do, I, I ended up having people that that struggled, right? Yeah, I mean, there there were people that were very close to the ministry, some people even in uh, leadership roles that weren't in agreement with that and decided to go their own way and do their own thing. And 
Um, but then there were others of us that would just knew that, that this this is what God wants us to do. And mm-hmm. there's not even a thought of doing something different and closing down this church that has meant so much to us and everybody that had been coming so regularly. So it was just a natural thing to do. And for those that uh, didn't see it, you know, got out of their plans for them. Right. But it did take for me, like uh, when you first said we're going to keep our doors open, I was a little scared, but, yeah. Yeah. you know, I knew you were being obedient. Mm-hmm. And I think that was for uh, for me was something awesome to watch um, and it, it, was, yeah, it was definitely for all of us it was you know it's it's not we, we say this a lot it's not easy being a christian you know because god doesn't ask you to do easy things it, it's tough the stuff he asks you to do is tough and you know it, it wasn't tough it's never been tough to say okay well let's just assemble ourselves together bible says hebrews 10 don't neglect assembling yourself together. Okay, well, that's easy. Well, it's different when all of a sudden you have a government telling you you're not allowed to assemble yourself together. So then it became difficult in one sense, you know, because people were struggling with that. But honestly, it wasn't difficult for me. And I'll, and I'll say this, people said, oh, Pastor Jim, you're so courageous. I, honestly, I don't believe that. I don't. It was, I'll be honest with you. It was not a courageous thing for me. It was easy. Super obedience. easy. It was so easy. Like people, how do you open the church? Uh, same way I did before COVID. Stick the key in the thing, <laughs> unlock the thing, open the door. It's not difficult. This is easy. You know, like it's so. To me, it was such a no-brainer. It took zero courage. Zero. I'm being honest with you. I was not a courageous man. I, to me, it was so easy and so obvious that of course we're going to open the church. Of course we're not going to shut down. Who they think they are, telling the church of God. God's bride, what to do. It just didn't even make any sense. So we, we did that, and of course, you know, we had some people that didn't like it. And, and, you know, and just like Moses had to learn to be a better leader, I've had to learn to be a better leader, and that's something I've been having to do my whole time being a leader. you got to learn how to lead properly, and, and there are times where Moses failed. There's been times where I've failed, um, but we, you know, we pick, pick up our... You know, we pick, we get, the Bible says, even though a righteous man falls seven times, he gets right back up again. You know, you get up, you keep going and you keep doing what God's called you to do. And, and it was neat to watch because we, we had two services at the beginning of COVID and, and um, we only had two services, not because we needed two services, but just because we wanted people serving in children's ministry to be able to go to church. So we'd have two services. So you'd serve in one and go to church in the other, but we didn't have that many people come in. So we didn't need two services. Um, but when, when COVID hit and we opened the you know, doors like we normally would, people started showing up and we went from two services to three services to four services. Um, we were holding Easter services. If you take a look at this, this is one of our Easter services during COVID. Um, that was, you know, we had over a thousand people showing up and l- overlooking the valley and, and God was doing something, you know, and, and it wasn't anything we were doing, it was something God was doing. And I remember telling the people coming to the church, I would tell them every single week, hey, listen, when this whole thing ends, when they, when they stop all this shutdowns and all this stuff, when you go back to your, your church, whatever church you came from, make sure that you, you know, that you encourage your pastor in this, make sure you challenge your pastor in that. And I kept saying things like that. And I'll never forget. And, I, and for some reason, I can't remember who it was that said this to me, but it, it was so impactful on my life. I wish, and if it was you that said it, come and remind me that it was you that said it. But they said, they came in and said, Pastor Tim, stop saying that. Stop saying, we're not going back. God, God has brought us here. This is where we're at. So stop saying that. And I, and I did from that point forward, I stopped saying that. And I just figured, well, if the Lord brought them here, then the Lord brought them here. I, I certainly didn't try to make that happen. And, and Pastor Simon didn't try to make that No, happen. not at all. I mean, he's never been a pastor that has wanted to grow the church in numbers. Um, the church growth that has been desired has been in the spiritual growth and maturity of everybody who comes here. That's the purpose of the church. And we've all been in agreement with that. So it's never been a goal to increase it like that, like we did in the numbers of people that showed up. And for myself, coming from a background of sales and marketing and advertising, it's kind of natural for me to think, how can I promote something? What can I do to try to bring in more, but I've always been real careful about with the church because I know that the church is not going to grow through that kind of method. And so we could have not done anything to attract the people that came to the church 
And it was just solidifying that lesson that um, if we remain obedient and if our pastor continues to do what he's called to do by the Lord as the shepherd of this church, then God will grow and build the church as he sees fit. And the growth will be in that spiritual maturity. We attracted people to the church that came here for the word of God because it was important to be at church and have fellowship and worship corporately together as a church body. And that's the type of church that has remained. And so, like I said, we could have not manufactured that or attracted that through any of our own means. And um, that just shows us that we can never go about it that way. We're just going to do what God is calling us to do, and God will bring who he desires to bring. Right. Yeah. And I, and I can honestly say this, and I think you guys can attest to this, my preaching hasn't changed. No. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's verse by verse, chapter by chapter. Take it or leave it. If you don't like it, go talk to God. You know, it's like, I'm just going to give you what God's word says. And that's the best thing for me to do because if I give you what I think, you just, I'm just going to mess you guys up. But if I give you what God says, then you can take what God says and go and apply it to your life. And, and God's word always works. It's always right. And, you know, we, we talk about that every week, that it's the infallible inerrant word of God, and, and it is perfect in all of its ways. Um, we get to those those four services, and we're like, all right, Lord, um, we, we really believe that, that now might be a time that we could have something more permanent than than renting, and and somebody came to us that we've known for a long time, a real estate agent, said, hey, I've got a building I really think you should take a look at, and it's the building that we now have, and the price was absolutely right. Um, with, with the freeway visibility, uh, we got that building at a steal, $1.6 million. That's like nothing. Yeah, that means... It's 1.3. 1.3. 1.3, even oh. less. Yeah. Oh, even less. Um, he, See, he, we uh, don't know numbers. Money guy, I don't know nothing. <laughs> but um, yeah, so 1.3, I mean, that's, you know, there are houses in Temecula that cost 1.3 million. You know, many houses, I mean, you know, that's, yeah, it's like... You know, and we have a 30,000 square foot building with freeway visibility. I mean, God, God opened the door for that. And we found ourselves doing a building dedication. We bought the building, dedicated a couple years ago. You said, what, what day? I was March of 22. March of 22. So we, we get outside, we dedicate this building to the Lord, and, and uh, we set out to hire an architect and, and you know, the engineers and start the plans, the process of getting getting the plans ready to get to the city. And we we went through one architect and ended up with a different architect, which so prolonged the amount of time. Um, and those of you that are in building and, and development, you know these things could take time, and it's it's been a frustration. And uh, Pastor Simon and I have both been learning quite a bit about this process. A lot, yeah. yeah. Um, Enough to know that we can wait a while before we do another project yes. like this. I'm just yes. Ho- I'm just hoping for the rapture. I'm hoping the next <laughs> final move is the rapture. Yes. That'll be much easier, yes. that one. Yes. <laughs> um, but we, you know, we dedicated it, started that process, and we ended up running out of time at the McCalby Court building, as many of you know, we we just the lease was up, and uh, the school district wanted our space. Which, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but the moment we moved out, the school district miraculously didn't want that space anymore. <laughs> so, um, but that's how things go. But God moved us from there to here, and um, and what we found a beautiful our, building. Right? What a beautiful building, and and you know, West Bentley. Um, yeah, we moved here to, to FRM, and Wes Bentley came and, and preached one of the days. And, and what a blessing this man in his ministry has been to our ministry. Um, incredible. Well, hey, everybody, uh, this is Tim Thompson again. Hey, I hope that was a blessing to you. And I just want to let you know we would love to have you come join us at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. We're down off of Jefferson Avenue, 27919 Jefferson Avenue in Temecula. We'd love to have you join us for one of our services where we teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter, precept upon precept. Love to have you guys join us. Like I said, that's uh, to me, that's the most important thing is God's Word. You're definitely going to get that with us. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you're encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, 
and to take back the public square.